Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to show you some beginner math rock licks that are based on shell voicings, or seventh chords that do not have a fifth. So if you want to know more about shell voicings and how they work, what context they come from, then be sure to check out my video on beginner math rock chords. It should be posted right here. Anyways, the licks that we're looking at today, they all come from a large document that I've created for my Patreon subscribers. That document contains not only these licks, but a bunch of other ones that cover concepts like legato, pull-offs into open notes, syncopated rhythms, etc. So there's a lot more riffs than the ones that we're exploring today, but these are some good beginner ones to get you started. And uh, that being said, let's start with our first lick. So every lick that we're looking at today is going to be based off chords and particularly these shapes at the foundation. So for the first lick, we're going to start with this minor 7 chord here. This is a B minor 7 chord, and we're in the key of G. So this is our root here. And what we're going to do is put a little flourish on this sound here to make it so that our arpeggio is a little more interesting. Basically, we are going to take a note that is below the root. So if this note is B, we're going to go to A, and we're going to hammer on from this note here, which is the seventh, into the root, and then we're going to play our arpeggio. So we have this sound, and this is essentially the lick. So you can take this lick here and use that on any one of these minor seven forms. The next lick is the exact same concept, but instead based on the seventh chord. So again, we're going to take the root here, and we're going to find the note that is right below it, or the seventh. In this case, if this is a C, the note below would be B. Just follow the op of it. And we're going to hammer on from the B up to the C, and we're going to play the rest of the arpeggio. And that is our lick. So if we go to the first one, we have this sound based off the minor seven lick, and this sound based off the major seven chord slash lick. Now, for our next idea, I'm going to show you a bit about how I connect chords together using slides. So the two chords that will be involved in this lick are, again, B minor 7 and C major 7. So I'm starting from these chords, and I'm going to connect them together. The idea is that we're going to start with the B minor 7 sound, and we're going to arpeggiate it. And when we get to the upper note of this chord, we're going to slide up a whole step, and we're going to see this note played by the pinky as the upper note of the C major 7 chord. So once again, B minor 7, we're going to slide up to this note here, and that's going to be the top note of C major 7. But to make the lick more interesting, we're going to carve out this arpeggio pattern. So I'm going to send the B minor 7 chord, we're going to slide up into this top tone of the C major 7 chord, and we're going to descend it. So once again, we have that lick if we put it all together. So it's just these two chords, but they've been fused together to create a single line. Now, for the next lick, I'm going to combine the first two ideas with this second connected chord idea. So we're going to take this little flourish, where we go from the seventh into the root, and then we play the arpeggio, and we're going to slide up and do this little connected chord idea, just to create even more shape and texture on these sounds here. So again, B minor 7, C major 7, hammer on from the 7th of this B minor 7 chord, slide up, and then finish the arpeggio of the C major 7 chord. So in time to rhythm, that's our lick. Now for the next lick, we're going to look at something that's pretty similar to this. And we're going to start with these chords. So our lick is going to descend, and it's going to go from E minor 7 to C major 7 to B minor 7, and then to A minor 7. Instead of starting with the root of the chord, or in this case, the lowest pitch, we're going to start on the upper note this time, just to make things a little different. So we're going to go like that, and just do this little arpeggio. And then we're going to slide down to this note here, which is going to be the upper note of the C major 7 chord. So we're going to do a similar concept to the third lick where I connected the chords. Um, but instead of going up, we're going down. And we're just going to continue this little gesture here. 
And then we're gonna do it one more time. We have this nice little resolute sound. So if I put it all together and play it to time, we have one more time. Now for the next lick, we're gonna do something that combines this concept with another concept. We're gonna try and play a chord shape that has a bass note on a different string. So up to this point, we've been playing chords where all of the notes are contained on the exact same set of strings. In this case, the E string, the A string, and the D string. So now we're gonna use these chords. We're gonna use a C major seven chord with the root on the A string. And then we're gonna use another shell voice in here spaced differently. So this is gonna be a B minor seven chord go to an A minor 7 chord. So once again, these are our sounds. So I'll play the lick. It's going to go. And so what's essentially happening here is we're taking the C major 7 chord, we're arpeggiating it, we're doing a slide, and we're sliding into the upper note of this shape here, and we're playing this little arpeggio pattern where we go from the highest note to the lowest note to the middle note. Then we're going to slide from the middle note down into this A minor 7 chord to wrap it all up. So we have... So we end up with that. Now, for the last idea, this would come from the last section of my document, so it's going to be a little more challenging. And it's just going to be a chord progression that's going to be based on E minor 7, B minor 7, C major 7, and A minor 7. But we're going to focus on rhythm this time, and I want to demonstrate the power of rhythm as something that can make a simple idea sound more interesting. So the lick is going to sound like this. So what we've got going on here is just a simple set of chords, but with a syncopated rhythm behind it. So the point of this is when you're messing around with your shell voicings and you're trying to create ideas, you might find that the stuff you're playing maybe isn't super interesting or intriguing to you. And part of the issue could be rhythm. If the rhythm's not solid, um, or all that interesting, then the idea is probably going to fall behind. So you can take something that is harmonically very simple and spice it up if you just have a more confident rhythm pattern. In this case, I like these syncopations of this dun, 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 dun kind of thing. So that whole modern dotted rhythm effect really catches my ear, and I find that that alone can make this pattern more interesting. I mean, if, even if we took it and applied it to a single chord, I think that would still sound Kind of neat, like if we went. So yeah, play around with rhythms and make sure that that's a priority when you're writing. Anyways, that's all the shell voicing licks that we're gonna look at today. If you liked these, then again, be sure to check out that document on the Patreon page as it's got a lot more of this kind of stuff. Anyways, I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.